What is up YouTube? In this video, we're going to look at how you can use Ansible to automate your Docker deployments. So basically in my previous video, I kind of covered how you can use Docker to deploy applications such as Airflow with ease. Docker already solves a lot of the big problems by providing you a continuous development and testing environment and also a place for productionizing the same code. So basically you can package your code with dependency altogether as an image that can kind of run anywhere. However, in my experience as a data engineer, this is still a missing link. So once you kind of develop this uh, application around Docker with the dependencies in place, uh, the next step is to kind of use this image and deploy this somewhere. Uh, a lot of the cloud providers kind of provide the services where you, such as Elastic Beanstalk or even like Cloud Run, Google Cloud, that allows you to deploy the container as is at production scale. But sometimes you're kind of limited by the infrastructure you've been given. Sometimes it's just a VM you need to just work with. In that case, there's a pro problem I usually face, which I call as the last mile automation. That's kind of the problem. So you have this VM in place, maybe on cloud or somewhere else. Uh, you need to put this code uh, which is in Docker onto this directly. You could do it manually. You could do it just logging into SSH. Uh, there are many ways to do it, just shell scripts. But I think that's where kind of uh, Ansible can be really helpful. Uh, Ansible is like an automation deployment tool. It does a lot more things, but I've used mainly it for automating my deployments using Docker. So in this, in this video, I'm going to cover how you can use Ansible as an IT automation tool to deploy your applications with ease, be it an Airflow container, an API, front-end, etc. Let's look into what exactly Ansible is and how it kind of works internally. So the first point you need to think of, Ansible is kind of an IT automation tool. It's like a generalized IT automation tool that allows you to do a lot more uh, automation uh, across the IT needs, I would say. So basically it allows you to do not just application deployment, which I'm gonna do in this video, also allows you to do cloud provisioning, like what Terraform does usually, configuration management, intra-service orchestration. And there's a lot more things that Ansible can also do. It actually uses playbooks behind the scenes, which allows you to automate all these things. Uh, it uses a format called YAML, which is like very simple to read and easy to read. Ansible works by connecting your nodes, we're connecting your instances or VMs, and pushes out small programs over the SSH. Uh, they call them Ansible modules. So these programs are written to be resource models of the desired state. So basically it kind of cons considers a state of the system from here and there. Uh, these are deployed across over SSH, as I mentioned. Uh, one of the core things to all of this deployment is actually Ansible playbooks. It actually allows you to write down the automation steps into these YAML files. Looking into my scores code, I'm kind of building it up. I have um, a few things in place actually for you to show. So you can see the Docker folder, it's basically the same Dockerization which I did in the previous video. I just copied the whole folder here. So the idea is my Ansible deployment would basically run the images being hosted into this Docker Compose. So at the end, it's just gonna call the Docker Compose. As I mentioned, Ansible is kind of broken into multiple parts. It always starts from uh, the playbook. So basically this is one of the playbook I have built here, uh, setup.docker.yml. So uh, the way I'm thinking is to have it into two parts. One is the setup of Docker, which is like installation of Docker on the VM. So VM is like a bare bones Ubuntu instance I would have maybe on a cloud or somewhere. So first script I would run is to install the Docker. Let's briefly look at the, the setup docker.sh file, the shell script which is going to install. So what will happen, the Ansible will basically copy this file there and run this uh, shell script. So it has only a few steps, getting up the Docker image, installing Docker, Docker C, Docker C client. And after that, it just restarts Docker and install Docker Compo. It does a few more things, basically providing permission for the user. I'm gonna use my name as the user and then just providing it as a sudo permission, that's it. A simple shell script being executed from this configuration file. So yeah, let's quickly go through how it, go it is going to work. First of all, uh, I'm gonna call this setup docker playbook. It will look at host, the IPs I'm kind of going to provide. So if I go to inventory, I go to host any, I need to provide the IP of the server. It, uh, it's going to use that with the user I provide, a variable kind of under group wires where it says, hey, Ansible username is like this, and the private key file kind of exists here. So I already have like a private key, I'm gonna use that public key and uh, import that into my Linux server for it to work. 
After that, it, it will call in this task called install Docker under roles. There, there are multiple tasks. So if I go under folder roles, we can see these two tasks install Docker. Within install Docker, there's another folder called task. Uh, I will just call this main.yaml file. So that's how the whole uh, a tree of flow kind of works. Within that, then the, within the task, I have all these like four uh, configuration commands using YAML files. So the first one is to create a directory, creates a folder inside of, uh, it creates the folder inside of that server. So this is the name of the task. And then this is how it's being executed. It says, hey, can I create this file, basically a directory at this path. Ansible user is same as like my name, kind of put it there. And then the owner is the same as Ansible user. It will also register this as a variable. So basically this means that it registers this as a variable deploy DIR. I'm just further using that later on in this next step. So next is copying these installation files. So as I showed you, there's one installation file called instance that's dash startup.sh. I'm going to place this, basically just copy this into the folder there, which is uh, destination is item destination. Yeah, which is basically the deploy DIR path. So I just created this directory and I have a path in place. And then the next one is just running the shell script, uh, sh and keeping the log somewhere for me to debug if, it, if it's required. Instead of me going to a server, copying all this file, either from Git or somewhere else, uh, this is, I think, really straightforward for me to use. Uh, based on my experience, a lot of the VMs kind of, I usually deploy on, has a lot of restrictions in terms of permission from the internet. So the idea is I kind of package everything from here and then just push it there and uh, deploy. So yeah, uh, this is done. Then as a next step, we're going to look at deploy Docker tasks. So yeah, let's just look into it really quickly. The first step is to kind of create a directory. That's usually the point where you kind of create a directory on the remote host. So this will use uh, the remote host inside of inventory host.ini file, and it will create a directory there. It will register the directory as deploy DIRs for further, uh, uh, for further task within Ansible to be used. And as a next step, it will create a uh, create the image. Basically, it will build the image locally and save it. So it's basically pointing at build docker.sh. So if I go into that, it's part of the previous flow. I've just added one more command. So it's just a basic docker build command, airflow latest. And then there is another docker save command. What happens is using this command, we can save it as an, uh, save the image as a gzip file. Usually the flow is you kind of save it in the container registry. But in my case, I want to cover the part when, for example, the server you're deploying to doesn't have access to the internet. It doesn't have access to this Docker container registry where it can pull images from. So in this case, I think this is a good step where you save it as a gzip file for you to deploy later on. All right, uh, moving back to the YAML file. So this command kind of builds uh, the image locally and saves it uh, in a folder. In the next command, we copy. So basically now in this command, we're copying this gzip file to the deploy DIR path within this folder under the host. The next step is to basically load this image into Docker. So we use Docker load to install the image on that um, VM. As the next step, uh, we are creating a DAG folder. First, we create the DAG folder. In the next step, we're copying all the DAGs here and locally to the folder DAG DIR path. Basically, it just copies all the DAG code there. The next step is basically to call this Docker Compose. It will spin up the Docker container. Basically, all the dependencies are kind of laid out here. It will spin up this Airflow container. Uh, it will spin up this Airflow image as a container, call it Airflow as a service within uh, the Docker Compose. And hence, it will just deploy the container there. And then uh, if there's an error or anything, you can just always debug it. That's why I'm outputting everything into run compose.txt file so that it's easier to debug later on. All right, so now that everything is placed, I really want to showcase the whole structure of the deployment, which is uh, looking like this. So, so first of all, let's look at the main folders. Uh, there's a Docker folder for all the Docker images. So Airflow has an image there. There's a setup folder for the shell script, which, you, which, use, which is being used to set up the... Uh, Docker dependencies. Uh, there's the DAX folder where all the code for the Airflow kind of resides. There's Ansible folder uh, where all the Ansible code kind of lives. So within the Ansible folder, uh, the way it works is uh, there's a structure to how you organize the YAML files uh, for Ansible. Basically, we are using playbooks. You could always use Ansible command directly. 
you can use even use a single playbook i think that's much more easier to do but i think uh splitting your playbooks uh, into more logical parts is uh it's good for the long term and maintaining your code so that's what we have done it so we can start off with the deploy.sh in this one you can see the the commands so i've laid out a small shell script which basically calls this playbook based on the parameters you pass so you can see there are two parameters deploy uh, setup docker and deploy docker as i mentioned yeah, if you pass in either of the argument, it will call in the respective playbook. So this will call the setup docker dot yml. This will call the do, uh, deploy docker dot yml. So setup docker directly the setup docker dot yml calls in the role. Within role, there's um, a yaml file main dot yaml file which it calls internally. So that's how that's how it usually works. Similarly for the deploy docker dot yml, it says uh, this is the command. Uh, this is the main uh, yaml file use the host web servers which kind of lives here under host.ini uh, which are we passing through the command remote user uh, it could be anything uh, uh, remote user would be the user you, you, you're going to use in the vm make sure you have the right one uh, roles deploy docker uh, basically it will call this yaml script i built under roles so main.yaml file that's mostly it for this video we looked at how you can use ansible to deploy docker images on your vms uh from my understanding and from my use cases it's kind of really useful from on a daily basis where you kind of package everything together local as a local build instead of using the internet and just push it here uh, using ansible internally ansible uses ssh so it's usually not a problem uh, the dependencies are not a problem and the process is usually smooth with all the steps laid out in YML files. It's very easy to configure, I would say. It saves me a lot of time, definitely. Hope you guys like this video. Hope you will try out the code I will publish on my GitHub repo. Definitely check it out and uh, you can easily use it. Let me know if you have any questions or if you face any issues with this. That's mostly it in terms of this video. Thanks a lot for watching. So if you gain value out of this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me a lot to push my content online further to people like you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.